Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dennis. So today's video is going to be a basically I'm going to start doing a budget build in a nice case. <laughs> it's kind of odd, but anyway, so the motherboard before I uh, get into doing all that um, that I chose was the B450M DS3H from Gigabyte. So we're going to get out of the box, we're going to show it to you, we're going to go over all the features and why I chose that particular one, uh, other than the fact that it was a good price point, and uh, what you're giving up by getting a motherboard like that. Now it is a micro ATX motherboard, so just keep that in mind. So it's a bit smaller, but that's okay, the case will accommodate uh, that size motherboard. So let's get out of the box, have a look at it, see what comes with it, and see if it's worth the money. Okay, so here's our first look. So Gigabyte Ultra Durable, there's the name. And so it will accommodate the Ryzen 3000 series, has RGB Fusion, SmartFan 5, VR Ready, like I guess they all are VR Ready. And it is AM4 socket motherboard. Okay, so let's have a look inside and we'll go over some more of the details. So right on the top, we have a couple SATA cables. And let's get it out of the box here. Okay. So we're going to have a look at this in just a moment. First, we're going to see what else is in the box. I always like to explore. So let's get this out. So it comes with our I.O. shield. Okay, nothing fancy. Comes with the Gigabyte software on a DVD. They keep hoping for the day they might put that on a uh, USB stick for us. And here's a little guide that tells you everything about the motherboard. Basically, in a nutshell. Okay, nothing fancy. So, let's get the motherboard out and have a look. Okay, so we're going to get it out of the packaging. And we got my little stand here that I like to put it on. And that just helps you see it a little bit better. And we'll go across and we'll explore all the features. Uh, okay, so you've got right here Okay, see those little transistors that is your 4 plus 3 hybrid digital PDO, PWN design We have our M.2 drive right here, which is uh, PCIe Gen 3 times 4 22110 M.2 connector and it will support up to 32 gigabyte per second And like I said, it has the smart fan 5 temperature sensors and hybrid uh, fan headers and you have two of those okay so we're going to quickly just point out some other features here first this is your AM4 socket where your CPU is going to go your brackets so if you're using the stock cooler you're going to be using these so like I say don't throw them away don't lose them because you may wind up needing them at some point okay we have four dim slots And, of course, you have room for two graphics cards. So on a board this size, that's pretty good. And, of course, a PCIe 1 slot. And your first slot here is PCIe 3.0. Memory is dual channel, DDR4. It has your SATA ports. So you've got three here and one here for a total of four. And the one uh, M.2 for your SSD. It supports RAID 0, 1, and 10. You have six, uh, when we get to the back, they'll show you the uh, USB. It has a channel right here, okay? So you see all those lines, they uh, separate it, and that's to prevent uh, hissing and popping, and it gives you a better sound quality. So it has eight channel HD, Realtek, Gigabyte LAN, and it's a mic like I said, it's a micro ATX, which is uh, 244 by 215. And of course you have these long lifespan, okay, solid capacitors. And of course they mentioned that it is a uh, anti-sulfur resistor with ultra durable design. Okay, so starting on this side of the board, we have our front panel audio right here, followed by a TPM module, a COM port, USB 2.0 times 2, and USB 3.0. And of course, your front panel connectors are all right here. So I just want to go back and, and re-clarify. So, like I said, this is the PCIe Time 16 
This is the PCIe times one, and this is PCIe times four, okay? Just to clarify that, because I don't think I mentioned that quite right the first time. So in case you're looking for it, right there is your clear CMOS uh, jumpers. Now, when we're talking about our SATA, I just want to point it out that it goes zero, one, two, and three. Okay, sometimes people like to know what order that goes in. Really doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but it's always good to point that out. So you have your eight pin power here, and down at the bottom we have our 24 pin. Okay, 12 volt ATX, all right, right there. And of course your 24 pin for your power. So eight pin, 24 pin, just to clarify. So let's get a look at the other side of the board here. It's a very tiny board. I actually really like smaller boards. Not really sure why, just I think they're, they give you so many more options. So of course, here's all your settings for your headphones, mic, all that kind of good stuff. Your Gigabyte LAN, two USB 2.0s, two, uh, four USB 3.0, uh, your HDMI, your DVI, two more USB 2.0s, and the old style uh, keyboard and mouse. And of course, the USB is 3.1, Gen 1. Okay, just to clarify, USB 3.1 Gen 1 for those four. So I do quickly want to just show you the back of the motherboard. Okay, we have our normal back plate right here. So you may or may not need to take that off. Okay, everything else is pretty standard. So of course, I just want to mention again that you have your CPU. They mentioned two system fan hitters, but it's a bit uh, deceiving really because you have one system fan here and then the other one is your uh, CPU uh, where that's going to plug in, which is down the bottom down here. So it really isn't any other ones to speak of. So really they should say one CPU fan header and one system fan header. Now it does have a, a CPU LED. So basically just for your LED strips, um, it doesn't have an addressable uh, RGB header. So just keep that in mind. And that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot to say about this motherboard. One of the things I bought this motherboard for, other than the fact that it's a budget build, um, is what happens when you get a board like this and you got a case that has USB-C on it, Type-C. So I'm going to show you that. It's in a video coming up, but I wanted to point out that even with a board like this, there is a way to make that happen. Very inexpensive way, as a matter of fact. All right, so it's not, uh, not packed with a lot of features, but it does have some um, super, it was pretty cheap. It was uh, much better than what you normally pay uh, for a lot of things. Now the B450 motherboard, uh, I suspect the, the B550 that's coming out, uh, it's gonna be a much better board. You've probably seen some reviews on it already. And uh, in actual fact, the B550 motherboards that are coming out are actually almost better than the X570s that are out there now. Um, some of them have a lot more features, um, in fact, more than most the X570s. So it's definitely a route to go. Now for a budget build like this, you can't really go wrong. It's got all the features you're gonna need. Um, motherboard doesn't light up with RGB, so you don't have all those features that maybe you don't want in the first place. So just keep that in mind. So. If you like the video, hit that like. If you don't, you know what to do. Hit that bell for future notifications if you want to see other videos coming up, like how to get that USB-C working when there's no connector on your motherboard. It's pretty simple, but still good to know. If you're new here, think about subscribing. And thanks for watching the video. Take care.